The one couple that stuck out was uh, Margaret Njenga and Joseph. So the thing about Margaret, she met him in a club. Now, Naomi Mnambioga Bibi Hapatikani Kwenye Club. But this man saw a woman, met her in the club, was able to help her deal with alcoholism, and found a wife that he's so happily in love with. Take a look. So I understand that you and Joseph, who is your husband, yes. you've been together for over 11 years? Yes, we have. So how many years in total? Let me say almost 15 years now. 15 years yeah. in total. Yeah. And literally, your love story is not the conventional one. No. Because no, as a married couple, you've been married for three years only. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah. you've been together for 15. Yes. So I'm sure kuna story hapo. Kabisa. Probably start us off from how did you guys meet? Hmm, it's an interesting story because uh, when we met, we were all clubbing. Actually, we met in a club. I was having my fun with frustrations. I had a past relationship. I was married to another relationship. Was so, it was so physically abusive to me, even emotionally. So I had just left the first relationship of uh, almost one year. So I was clubbing just to clear my mind off. No, this man comes to me. So you were depressed? Yeah. Dealing with a failed marriage? Yes. And just trying to figure out who am I in the context yes. of everything? Mm -hmm. So there you are, you meet this young man, Joseph, yeah. in a club? In a club. Uh, so who yeah. approached the, the other one first? He did approach me. He used my friend. I was with a lady friend. So for them courting, it was like two of them courting me. So finally I gave in with the understanding, like, let me give it a try. So Alingiza yeah. Beshtiako box Kwanza, yeah. Yeah. then the Beshtiako Kakosa, his ally, mm -hmm. telling him about you. Where I work, my phone number, where I stay. Yeah. And so finally, he was able to get in touch with you, yes. have direct contact with you. So mm -hmm. what about him made you think, OK, Uyu, Tunezaka? It's the persistence. And also, he had so much love. I had a, a child in the other relationship. He tried quoting my child, showing him so much love that I was like, OK, he can still stand as a father to my child. How old was your child? And then he was around five years. So you had a five-year-old son? Yes, uh, no, a daughter. A daughter, yeah. five-year-old daughter? Yeah. There is that first appearance. When I saw her, I, I did not beat out of the bush because I knew. I had came through so many people, and uh, I was of age. I wanted to have a wife. That's what I saw in her. And there are people who are going to get married, um, uh, she's from a, you know, just freshly out of a marriage, divorced. Yes. She's coming with a child. So for you, di did that hinder you in any way? Actually, it was my prayer to have a wife who already have a child. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, you seem surprised. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I came to realize later. Much like, later. Yeah, he wanted yeah. somebody responsible. So you, he's very good with kids. Very, yeah. very good. So when I, I, I got her, I, I knew this is an ans answered prayer. Right, and then we also had the show whereby I had David Quinton and Rachel, if ever, and this I'm saying with all the humility, when I did this show, and you know what, first, just take a look, before, before I can come back and explain, just take a look, <laughs> David, David Quinton and Rachel. I finished my college the year 2016, and she just came from school the other month, January. So you're a couple of years older than her? Yeah, Rachel is my choice, because one, she's understanding, and uh, she respects me a lot. She gives, she gives me space. So she's like, she has all the qualities I wanted in a lady. But, but does she have all the qualities you want in a lady? Because you, you, you've told us you've cheated on her several times. No, I do cheat because unarudi kwa nyumba, uyu mtu anataka maziwa, anataka nini, na umepata mtu anakupatia. How do you, how do you <laughs> deny that? So it is an opportunity. Ask. I always use opportunity. So you're cheating on Rachel. For Rachel's sake. Okay, I, uh, in that case it is true. Because, okay, I don't necessarily approach them, the ladies, the other ladies. I'm always talkative and uh, I'm, I'm a bit joker. So I find myself joking to some extent that my jokes get something, someone in my box. So <laughs> taking that somebody outside that box becomes very hard. So. Since you've been with Rachel, how many times have you cheated on her? Okay, Rachel, I have cheated on her like five times with five ladies. With five different women? Yeah. And why do you feel like you keep doing it? Because you're saying she caught you with three out of the five. So clearly, Rachel knows that uh, David is not faithful. Yeah, 
she knows, but through my explanations, when we, when we talk, <laughs> you see, I'm very convincing. Yes, you are, David. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> convincing. So when we talk with her, yeah. she comes to understand. We come to an understanding point, and she agrees with me. For where I stay with him, he loves me, and I love him too. Yeah, and he's a responsible man. Responsible how? Kazi za nyumba. O kazi ya nyumba anakisaidia. Yeah, anakisaidia. He does everything, basically. Mm -hmm. He gives me money mm -hmm. for my hair, for my makeup, for my clothes. Yeah. So I understand that you guys had a quarrel recently and yeah. uh, you moved out? Yeah, I moved out. Yeah, I found him, he was cheating with another lady. In your house? Yeah. In his house. In Where his house. He stays. So it's not, it's not your house, it's his house. It's his house. Do you think you want to still continue the relationship, my dear? No. Do you like, Kama is in the there are many more in a bad daughter, maybe I'm a feature, and I try to tie you, and maybe I can tie me and beer. Now, Miss Taki, like, cheating, cheating, it's always cheating, cheating everywhere, cheating, I'm done. You know, if I'm, I think this was the one guest in my entire history of doing real talk. And I have done countless of episodes, but this one literally left me speechless. And the story here is that he reached out to the show because my producers will work very hard to book the right guests for the right topics. But he reached out to the show saying that he had an issue and he was hoping to come on the show for us to help him deal with his issue. And initially when he came on, even for me as the interviewer, and I am very level headed, I try my best not to judge. But just hearing him talk, and you guys didn't get to see the entire interview because we had to cut out some of it just for the interview to come across as sane. Because a lot of what he was saying was bordering on lunacy. Mm. But you were able to actually sit with him after the show because yes. I was stunned. Yeah, yeah. I didn't believe him. You did not believe him. Yeah. I didn't believe <laughs> that you would come on TV and mm. claim that you have a notebook and you've slept with how many women? It was quite a number. I can't even remember. Over 200 yes, women? it was quite a number. And actually, I, I could see the notebook and then the names of the women. That he there. slept with? Yes, yes. And then the poor girl, mm. Rachel, mm. who mm. he, they have since broken up. So I'm happy about that. I'm never happy about people breaking up. Mm. But this is one case whereby it was very unhealthy for Rachel to be in that yeah. relationship. Yeah. And... Again, that is why we do this show, to teach people, to heal people, because sometimes until you interact with a situation, you really don't believe that it's out there. Exactly. So then you were able to actually walk with Dave, with yes, Clinton. Yes, yes, so yes. probably tell us about that. No, uh, the, the, the stuff which are personal, and then, but the yeah. what, I can, what, what I can actually share is that he's carrying a lot of weight for himself. And I, you know, he's taking on the family weight from where he's actually born, you know, taking on that family weight and really, really struggling. And even at the point where we're having a conversation, he was literally sleeping in a burrito. You know, that's so why he, he, he was homeless. He was homeless and just trying to talk to him that you are taking in too much that you can handle. First of all, calm down. So he has a yes. sugar mommy, he's yes. homeless, yes. he has he's a homeless, girlfriend. Yes. And then he's got also siblings that he feels like he's under pressure to take care of. Just cool down. And this is, the, this is where also men, we fall into this trap where you want to be Superman. You know, we want to be Superman and sometimes that Superman syndrome ends up, uh, uh, makes us fall into trouble. So first of all, relax. If you're not healthy as a man, you will not be of benefit or of use or of value to any other person you'll actually be hurting hurting men hurt other people so first of all heal as a man and be like you know what cool down i'm young he's a young gentleman 25 years of age and he's taking and I think all this for him there's yes. also an element of addiction of addiction of addiction to, and addiction yeah. any addiction addiction is just a symptom of an underlying issue and so we need to address the root cause. That root cause is where he needs to get it right. Once he addresses the root cause, then the addiction will automatically just take care of itself. But a lot of the times we are fighting the addiction. So if you find somebody who is drinking a lot, stop telling them, stop drinking, stop drinking. No, 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 that's not the solution. Address the root cause. You find somebody addicted to sex, no, stop having sex, stop having sex. No, 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 address the root cause. Once you address the root cause, then automatically they grow. Somebody just grows on their own. And you see, for even for somebody like Rachel, when she was talking and you're like, when you're asking her, why do you love him? He gives me money. Where does he get the money? I actually don't even know. From that was what sugar he, yeah, from a sugar mommy. At first, he di she didn't even know. Then later, yeah. she discovered actually from a sugar mommy. So that was in itself, even not, not uh, uh, as a relationship, it was quite devoid of 
um, uh, uh, people knowing each other and that close communication. And so it was devoid of that. Those were two people who needed some time to be alone before they even engage in any relationship. So if you're a man and you're going through issues, first of all, address yourself. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be bringing this, al this al a lot of pain. And imagine if they were to get a child together. Imagine no, if a that's, child that's was to come a, into that situation. A, a small innocent yeah, soul yeah. thrown in the midst of all yeah. that confusion. Oh, exactly. Or a child with this woman, a child with woman number two, a child with woman number three. And that's how we're having so many men who are fathering, not fathering, siring a lot of children because they just haven't gotten themselves right. Men, we need to be responsible. Fix yourself as a man. And finally, as you wind up, because we have, I think, like two minutes left, yeah. Uh, in your own words, because we've been just summarizing all the topics that we w we've done so far that touch on love and relationships. What is love? Because yes. everyone wants true love. What yes. is love, then? What is love? Well, for me, this is uh, this is what I would say. Something. Love is when you seek to understand somebody, and then once you understand the person, you start to value them. And once you value the value in the person, now you start to invest. Because now I value, I invest in you. Once I invest in you, now I protect you. So understand, value, invest, protect. It's like a it's a, like a process. So somebody telling you, I fell in love with you from the first day they don't even know you they are attracted to you but they haven't yet gotten to know you so take time to understand the person you value them you invest in them and then you protect them it's so a journey love has layers it has layers love and is yeah. not just instant it's not just love instant at first and love layers. is not sex yes ask yourself this if you take away sex and and money from the equation do we still have something special mm -hmm. if you don't most likely it's not love like in rachel's case if you took away uh, uh, sex and uh, and and and, um, and money there was nothing. And once if there's nothing, it's so easy to walk away from it. So ask yourself that. Joanne, what is love as you wind up? I'll begin by asking, does society know when we are not well? Because yeah. listening to this uh, show, this, these conversations, I am asking even people who are not well, did they know they were not well? Because love, again, can only be defined from a place of wellness. When ho ho wholeness. Wholeness. Yeah, you have to be whole. Yes. Because when I say love is for me to get him because he has money, Oh, that he completes is, me. Mm. <laughs> hey, that's so dysfunctional. <laughs> that, that is exactly your own yes, yes, unmet yes, needs yes, yes. that <laughs> you need to heal from. Mm. So love can only be defined from a place of allness. If you're well, then you know what is it you're looking out for. Mm. But if you're not well, you will be looking. Actually, research has shown that most of the time at the place of marriage, at the point of attraction, people get attracted to people who tend to heal their woundedness. Mm. Someone who massages that wood that hurts so bad. So that is what we call love. So do we know when we are not well? Because if we are not well, we will be projecting our needs in the name of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my challenge to everyone is find this all material to read. You can tell what a healthy person looks like mm -hmm. and what an unhealthy one looks like. So that we stop attracting people who heal us. And the healing is very for a moment and then we realize we are continuing to hurt mm. because we demand them to continue to heal us something that a human being has no capacity to do Absolutely. so when we seek healing for us mm. we are able to attract someone not based on the voids of our needs but based on what we need for life right i really do hope that you guys have learned because i definitely have well that's all the time we have right here today on the real talk round table Remember, look out for the new season, which kicks off in January. Enjoy the rest of your day. Special thanks to E Plus for medic and ambulance services.